Hello everyone and welcome to Zobrio University's um, webinar on FE, Are You Secure? Let's find out. Today we have Crystal Haggerty, a Senior Application Consultant here at Zobrio to lead the webinar. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat which is located at the bottom of your screen and we'll go over all questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Haggerty and I'm here to talk about security. So I think security is an area that is often um, kind of set up when you first set up your system and then you kind of forget to go back in and take a look or you've been set up for a while, you get a new user and you're like, where do I go? What do I do? So hopefully today we'll be able to show you a few things that'll help you make sure that you're more secure within the system that you already have and help you set up new users as your organization grows and you build out your teams. So the first thing we're gonna do is look at, oh, where's my slide here? Um, security, don't overlook it. So we're gonna start off in database view. So most of you are probably now starting to work with Financial Edge and NXT in the web-based view and with the database view. Um, the majority of security does take place in database view at this time. And I think what we're gonna to start to see is them transitioning and building out more security within web view, but everything that you build in database view will feed into web view. So know that what you build here will take place and supersede stuff that's happening in your web view. So if you have limitations of what people can see in database view, they're gonna have those same limitations that you have in web view. <clears throat> now we're gonna take a look at in database view, view, creating a user and looking at the group settings. So first I'm gonna look at a group, creating the security settings by a group or what's gonna be called a role later on in web view. And there's different ones you can do. You can create security groups by whatever role they have in your office. Are they only working for accounts payable or are they accounts receivable or do they just work in GL with the general ledger? Like what exactly does an individual do tells you what kind of access they may or may not need. And then after we create a group or I show you how a group is created, we're also gonna take a look at how to create a user and add them to that group and giving them some rights, which we're gonna see both in creating group and in the user. So to see what can your users do? Can they view something? Can they add it? Can they edit? Do they delete? What can you do? So we're gonna take a look at all of that. And then we're gonna go into web view because you can't have too much security, can you? And we're gonna look at the roles and creating a group there and then inviting users to NXT. So especially some of you that are just now transitioning from database to web view, maybe you've just been invited to start looking at transitioning over to Azure, um, a couple of things that you'll need to take care of to make sure that all of your users have access to the systems that you need them to have access to. So first we're gonna start with database view and security groups. I'll show you again, to create a group with specialized functions, how to access specific accounts or funds, and again, letting us know, do we want this group to be able to view, add it, edit, or delete records in the system? Because we've got decisions, decisions, and you have lots of options. So it's something to always remember with security, there's a lot more happening than you expect. So right now I'm gonna share my, I'm still sharing my screen. I just transitioned over. So now we're looking at, I'm looking at our sample database. There's gonna be a few things different in our sample than you have in your database. So if you look at something and you're like, oh, this is a little different, it could just be that it's the sample. <clears throat> you know, for instance, the color on the side isn't the same. <laughs> um, there's gonna be a few uh, little bits that we don't have or that we have that you don't have. So don't be surprised if there's a couple of things that are different when you look at your system, but for the most part, it'll be pretty close. Now, not all of you, depend, well, depends on your role and who's joining us today, who will actually have access to being able to create these user groups and user and create a new user. All of this is found in administration. So if you don't have access to administration, which if in the database view, it's this little side piece here where the looks like a little file cabinet with a broom, because that's where you can do some cleanup stuff. Also configuration is cleanup but in administration, you might not have rights to this. So if you're somebody who they've now tasked with creating new, uh, getting a new user on board, you've hired a new person, you're gonna let, have to let someone know, I need access to this administration area. And from here, 
we're going to go to security setup. So you see it here, or if you go through the list, you can go right here. I'm going to click security setup. And up here at the top, this is all of the groups that have been created. So something else to think about, if you have a new system, you probably have some standard ones that just came with your database. They do a, a, just three or four groups that they just create so you can use them as examples. As you can see in our sample, we've created a bunch of things and we have a few different users also as well. So not all these people are real, <laughs> but <clears throat> if they were, wow, we'd have a lot of extra help around the office, wouldn't we? So I'm gonna take a look at this one that says AP. And I'm, so two things. One, if you're using the one that's already here, if you just double click on it, it's gonna open up that group for you. If you're gonna create a new group, all you have to do is up at the top, you've got an option here to create a new group. And actually to the right of that, you'll see it says new user. And whichever thing you're highlighted on, you can open. And then there's the delete button. <clears throat> Be careful of this. You don't wanna delete a group that's been created and then have to go back in and recreate because you're going to see there's a lot of options in here. So you kind of want to make sure, I know that's available, but we want to try to stay away from that if at all possible. It happens from time to time, not to worry. It's not difficult to build out a group or a new user, but we want to try not to get rid of anybody. Not too soon, right? So this AP one is, I created this just the other day for a client just to show them a few things. I carry this one just for those who are going to be working in accounts payable. So whichever area of the financial edge that somebody's going to work in, you give it the group name, you can change this to whatever you want to call it. Group name and group uh, description. Let me move this over here. I created a new one. Let's see if it'll let me. No, it won't. I'll open. These are highlighted in this turquoise color or a colored field, you know, from working in the database view, these are always required. So whatever you want to call it. Um, it just needs to make sure that there's a required, you've got a name. Um, I made it really simple, AP, accounts payable. And you can have more than one accounts payable be, depending on what they're doing. You have an option to create as many groups as you want. There's probably a limit. And as soon as I said, as many as you want, in my head, I'm hearing somebody go, we can only have a hundred, <laughs> but let's hope we're not creating a hundred, right? Ooh, that would be a lot of user groups. All right. On the left-hand side here, where it says group privileges, there's another tab here that says group members. So group privileges is where you start and create all of your security options. Anything on the left here that has a check mark box, you're telling the system. So now I've got a few extra things in here. Our sample is connected to Education Edge. Um, some of you may have that. So you'll see student billing. Um, and there's actually student billing is the only one that's extra in here. So if you see that, just go, wait, we don't have that. You wouldn't have that unless you're a school and you have Education Edge. Um, but all of these pieces here up to General Ledger, I'm going to close this for a second. You'll notice those are those same drop downs that you have up here on the top left when you pick which area of the financial edge you want to go into. So right now I'm just in General Ledger, accounts payable. If I'm going into any of these and I go to administration and security, I'm still going to get this exact same tab in the same group. Let me open that back up. So since I decided to do this for accounts payable, I have accounts payable checked. What that will do is it limits that anybody that's going to be, I'm going to click this group member for a minute. Anybody that are these group members are only going to see that drop down area that I've chosen. So who's in here? Uh, Jen and Mark, they're only going to have access from this drop down. It's only going to be accounts payable. They're not gonna have access to fixed assets or accounts receivable, cash receipts or general ledger. So you wanna check off anything you wanna see. If they need to see more, you just add another check mark and give them access to additional things. Now you can see here, as soon as I click on something over here on the right-hand side changes, right? So accounts payable, I've got different options, fixed assets, student billing. Oh, we're gonna skip student billing. Any of the ones I pick, I'll check them all because we're playing here. Um, I'm going to have extra information or extra stuff that's going to give me more records and uh, I'm going to have access to a few more things through that. Hold on one second. Oops. So accounts payable here. I'm going to start with that. And accounts payable, 
if I click over to the right where it says records, I get this options thing here. So if you see, let me come back. If it's not checked, so nothing over on the right-hand side is highlighted, I can't get in any options. But as soon as I highlight something, I've got options. This is where you can see where I'm like, you've got options and options and more options. You can really do a lot with security. So depending on the size of your organization, the, men, the staff that you have, um, and any securities that you have set up as protocol within your office space, you have a lot of choices here to really make your system very specific to the users and very secure. So accounts payable, records, options. If I click options here, there it comes. It drills in and gives me more options. So I'm gonna move these around a little bit. All right, and that's a little tight. So accounts payable records, it's now showing me, once I clicked options, all of the different records within here. And each one, so vendor, I have choices, options, where I can say all the people that are in my accounts payable, they can view everything. But right now, none of these people can do anything else until I make other decisions within their vendor records. They can't add them, they can't delete them, they can't edit, they can't do anything. But once I put a little check mark here, on any of the fields I think they can do. Now, maybe I only want them to be able to add a vendor, but I don't want them to be able to add notes. Anything I don't check, they're not gonna have access to do. But if I check it, they can. If I have edit, edit will let them, if they're gonna add it, they're gonna be able to edit. And then if I let them delete, well, I have it blocked so I can't delete anything in our system because we don't wanna do that. Any of the choices that you make, Below that, look down below, there's more options. So you can further define how you want your security group to be. Like I said, this can be as general as they get access to everything and everything, or they get access to invoices. Maybe they can view at it, but they can't delete. Or they can all of this, but they aren't allowed to change an invoice status, schedule a payment. So each of these areas you can really spend, and I do recommend getting together and it's you and another colleague and really fleshing these out. What do you need each user group to have? What do they need to see? What should they have access to? After you go through these and each area has something in particular. So query doesn't have anything, reports, reports does. And you'll know as soon as you click on it, query, I don't have an option because queries, well, you just build a query. Um, but reports, we've got options. Maybe there's some reports that you don't want them to run because they're gonna see additional information that's unnecessary or security reasons you don't need them to see. So I recommend really going through each of these, each area, clicking on the field, going through the options and looking through them and really thinking through what you want each person to have. Now, after you've created a group, so this group was already created, but if I had created a new group, I would have gone through, clicked all these pieces, made all my decisions. Then I can actually assign users. So any of the users that are already created, I'm gonna open up one here. Their information is up here at the top on this user information tab, this shows their password. Below are all those groups. So many of you who have access to administration, you probably have supervisor rights. So with supervisor rights, you have rights to all sorts of things. You're not having to make decisions because you're the supervisor. So a database supervisor, you're gonna be able to go in everywhere. But if you're not in that role, then you're gonna have to choose which of the groups that we were we designed that Bill should have. So he's in the data entry group, but maybe I want him also in the AP group. So we just wanna make sure that our user can add in and do anything from the user group. We just assign that user to that group. From here, there's a few things you need to do per user. Now this piece here, so you know, this is a lot of information to take in a, a quick uh, lunchtime Zobier University, but stick with me here a little bit. We've got this piece right here. It's kind of a little bit hidden. So you've already assigned somebody a group, but you want them to have access to all aspects of Financial Edge. 
if this is on, this user can only access Financial Edge, this says just the database. If you only want them to have WebView, then only online module. But if you want them to be able to get into both or at some point get into both, then you wanna make sure that they have access to both pieces. You can also choose if a user can change their password and their user options. Those user options are, um, you can actually set someone's user options right here if you'd like. And I don't know how many, that's, a, that's another class altogether, but we could get into user options and uh, that might be a good possibility for a good future Sobrio University is to really look at how you can modify and make all of your user options unique to you. But you can allow them to change their user options or you can say, don't do that because maybe you have set up specific user options that you want your whole team to use. And if that's the case, then you wanna uncheck this. Now, this is just this first tab. This piece here, this Windows authentication. If you are new to NXT and you're using the web view and you have moved to Azure, this will, once somebody accepts an invite, we're gonna take a look at that in a moment, this will autofill for you. If you are not there yet, you can go in and choose to use this Windows authentication and you can actually create a connection where you won't have to log in twice to the Razor's Edge or to the Financial Edge, sorry. <laughs> many systems from BlackBot to use. If that's the case, I would suggest the first time you're doing it, give a call to support. That's what they're there for. You've got them available. Say, you know what, I'm doing this for the first time. I just wanna make sure I'm on the right track with this user authentic, the Windows authentication. This other, you can also call them if you're setting up a user for the first time and need a little extra support. So you've got that as well. Here's another tab. So this first tab, basic user information, we're just saying, yep, Here's their password. They can access Financial Edge, uh, database and WebView, and this is the group that they're involved in. Account security, you can actually limit which accounts they have access to. So you can say allow access to all accounts or selected accounts. That would give you, you can either create a range or selected brings you out to a query. So depending on the size of your organization, I actually just was working with an organization, very large, and they have about 100 users and each of them work in very specific departments. And so their only access is to their account ranges. So you can limit the account ranges. Also, depending on how your system is set up, you might have project or you might have fund here. So you can also do the same thing here and limit to what projects or what funds that somebody has access to. And again, it's just looking at what they do every day what they need access to. Sometimes limiting it isn't so much security as you've got a new person in, you don't, they don't need to have to see everything. That can get a little overwhelming. So it could just be, look, we're just limiting your access now to get you involved and get you comfortable with Financial Edge. Then we're gonna open up other things. Or it could literally be this department, we are not supposed to see what's going on in there. And this department's not supposed to be see their side. So you can limit here per user. Signatures, if you have signatures and somebody's going in creating checks and you're dropping in a signature, maybe they create checks, but they're only allowed to have John Doe sign. So this can limit the signatures. You might be doing this a different way. So don't worry if you don't have anything in these fields. Online security. If you are using WebView and XT and you're using the expense module, you're gonna to wanna to come into online security and make sure you've got check marks here that allow the web view, the web invoicing to occur. So if you're doing any of that, you need to come into this tab and make sure that these are check marked. And I've had a couple of clients say, we have everything going, but nobody can submit invoices online. I'm like, oh, let's go into their security. Yep, we need to mark these. So that's a basic overview. Whoops, I gave somebody a query. We're gonna give them all access again for the database view. So you wanna create a group. Within the group is where you go and you, whoops, not that one, that's not fun to do. You wanna make sure that you're clicking on these different areas, checking all those options, option, options, options, and making sure that they're getting exactly what they should be having access to within this group. And then you're coming into the user and you're assigning them. Oh, sorry, new user. Whenever you create a new user name, you're just giving them their password and then you're assigning the group and going through all the tabs, just like we looked at for a user that was already created. 
Now let's go take a look at web view. So whatever's happening here, if we've limited bill here, um, and I'm not gonna have these same names, sorry, in my web view, um, just because of samples, but whatever I've done in here, that's gonna come over and come into play in my web view. Now in web view, I'm gonna come over, let me jump back up here. So database view, we know we've got some, we can create a group, we can create a user, we've got lots of decisions, we wanna make sure who can view, add, edit, or delete. So we've got that group. We're looking at these different pieces. Always check this bottom part. Make sure you check to see if there's anything in miscellaneous. You'll be surprised at things that you find. Creating new user groups, more decisions, more decisions, more options, freedom, freedom. <laughs> and making sure a couple of things. Big thing is going through these tabs and definitely this user piece to make sure people have access to both database and online web view. So now in web view, we're gonna go and take a look at the control panel area. So administration for database view, control panel for web view, where we can create a role and add a user. So we're going to this control panel. I'll show you this in a moment. This is where we have roles and users. You're gonna have more information in here than I have. Don't be surprised. And I'll show you how to create a user. So now here I am in web view. I go to control panel. Same thing as administration. If you don't have the security rights, but you're supposed to set somebody up, you're gonna have to let either database administrator or somebody who has full access give you rights to all of this. So if you go in and you don't have control panel, somebody just needs to let you have access for that. Security, this is where all of the online, so the security that's set up again, I know I've already said this, I repeat myself, all the stuff that we set up in, in database view will be connected to any of the users in here. So first thing is roles. So because this is a sample and we're always in and out, we don't have a lot of roles created. Um, and you can have some different things depending on the modules you have and different pieces that you've purchased with your financial edge. But if I wanna create a role, I just click create a role. So I'm on that role tab, create a role and I can give a role a name so I could say, call this, you know, all dashboards or, you know, analytic, analytic role um, and give it a description, you know, look at stuff. <laughs> Oops, stuff has two Fs. It's not funny when you don't spell it correctly, right? And I can choose what I want them to have. So I can tell them that they can manage dashboards when I check something, I wanna hit show permissions. So it shows me what they have. They have view, they can look at all of the dashboards collected, connected to analytics. So analytics would be your reporting um, and the analytic area, which has dashboards. So all of these, I would say a lot of people come through and flush this stuff out. I think they do the majority of their security setup in database view and then come into this later but you can make as many roles as you need. I'm just gonna hit save so we've got one in here. You can do one for financial roles, general ledger. So it's gonna look at these pieces. What do we have available? After you create your roles, when you go to your users, so I'm gonna use my account here. I can add a new user. So if I added a new user, we'll just pretend I'm adding me. It'll come up and I'm gonna have, whoops, actually. I'll click add a new user so you can see how it starts. I give it the name of the user, first name, last name, their email, and then I can make decisions here. So that role that was created, I can give this person that role. Now, if you see this make solutions admin or make an environment admin, to make a solutions admin means you don't have to pick any of these roles. It's like security um, having your uh, supervisor rights. You have rights to all the pieces within this administration area and all aspects of financial edge NXT web view. There's also this is environment role. And if you see that one on here, that gives you access to add things through the marketplace and through administration. So not everyone has that. If you do have that and you need more information, again, you can always let us know and also let support know. Now, once you've picked all your pieces, you can click and link this to an existing user, or you can create a new user. 
What I recommend is that you really create your users in database view and then come in here. I find it easier. I find it clearer to me. So when I'm linking, it's actually bringing up anything from the database view. Now I started to put, type in CH because I'm Crystal CH and I'll go in and look at mine and show you. So you're not seeing Crystal. If that's because I'm already linked. So you don't have to worry about you created a user in database view and you're going to accidentally link it in web view. That's not going to happen. Once it's linked to somebody, you're in it. You can create a new user here and you would choose. So these are all of the, those groups that we created. You know, there's my, there's my, here's my AP one. I can say, all right, I'm going to create a new user this way. Choose the group that I want them to be involved in. And then once I send this invite, it's going to actually create a user in the financial edge database view. So it's really kind of up to you. Like I said, I have my way of doing it. Everybody likes it one way or the other. This is a quick way to do it if you're just gonna stay within web view. And, um, and you know that those user roles, that group role that you set up is correct, then you could just assign them this way. I'm gonna hit cancel for a minute. So we can take a look at mine. So in mine, I'm an admin solution. So I have access. And see here, security group says Crystal Haggerty because that's my that was my user within the database view, and I'm marked as supervisor. I can edit my security group and remove me from being a, having supervisor rights. I can do that here. I can also uncheck my solutions administration and give me just specific roles. Now, once you've created all of this, so you've got a new hire, they've come in, you've you've created a group. You've got them in a group, you've created a user here, they're all set up. Then you come into WebView, add a new user. When you're ready to add it and you hit send invite, that's when they're gonna get that notification from Blackbot that says you've been invited. Once they click that and create their user Blackbot, their BB ID, you'll probably start seeing that more, BB ID. You know, Blackbot loves its an acronyms. Um, once they create that, it will automatically, once you're in WebView and you're in Azure, so I just want you to know this for Azure, it will automatically create this hosting connection for you. If you haven't transitioned it, you'll need to create this yourselves. Okay, so let me go back to WebView for a minute. So everything in WebView, control panel, security, you've got Azure users, create new roles, um, another little thing to look at, and I've only because I had a client the other day, uh, check and see who you've got here. This drop down here, I've got active and invitation sent, so I can see, well, all of ours are active. But you could say, you know what, I only want to see invitation sent only. And then you know, if you've sent out an invitation to somebody, if they haven't accepted it yet, you'll see that right here in their status. Or I did have a client set somebody up, accidentally got them marked inactive. So if you can't find somebody or you're having an issue, check your inactives to see who's in here. You might need to make somebody active again. But biggest thing to remember is you have lots of options. And I try to, and I know it sounds silly, but um, I say test things out. Create a user and test out that security you created. Um, when I was a database administrator, I always, I created a second login for myself that I could use to test everything out before I gave it to somebody. So, and plus it's kind of fun. You can go, oh, okay, now I can really see what do they have access to. And really look around. Don't be afraid to look around. You have so many pieces and you want to make sure your options, options, options. You've got them, use them, right? We don't want to not be able to do some things or just have somebody have access to something they shouldn't or go to a meeting where they're asking about our database security and we haven't gone through and looked at all of these things because you really can do quite a lot with security and now today's day and age we really do need to be a little more on the ball with that sometimes it's hard in our office I'm always like oh everybody's so great I'm not worried but then you know my supervisor goes so and so shouldn't see that and I go Ugh, you're right I'll go back in fix their fix their uh user rights and make some changes. So I hope some of this was helpful today. If you need any more information, you know, we're here to help. That's always available and 
from that very first slide, you probably saw mine. I'm gonna go back up here. Mm -hmm. Plus, just because it's fun. And I'm here too. So if there's any of these things that are interested or you've, you know, curious about anything, please give us a call and let us know.